Hello, friends. So I may have mentioned to you that I'm developing a course for advanced meditation and uh, it will be out soon. And it is actually based on the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, but the third chapter, which has to do with the awakening of dormant non-local potentials, including extrasensory perception and psychic abilities, so-called psychic abilities, which I believe are dormant potentials within every human being. And uh, this course involves the entire eight limbs of yoga, culminating with the last three for manifestation, which includes uh, focused awareness with attention and intention, meditation and transcendence. The exact mechanics will be shown in the course and I'll announce the course when it's available. But uh, let's talk for a moment on focused awareness with attention and intention because the two go together. When we attend to something, uh, it's always with an intention. So let's say, attention includes intention and attention is important for reasoning and problem solving uh, because it helps us focus on relevant information it helps us filter out distractions and allocate cognitive resources effectively here are some examples uh, why attention is crucial for these cognitive processes. So one, selective focus. Attention allows us to selectively focus on, the specific, on specific aspects of a problem or task. By directing our attention to relevant information, we can prioritize what is important and filter out irrelevant or distracting details. The selective focus helps us allocate our cognitive resources effectively and prevents uh, information overload. A second point to mention here is information processing. When we pay attention to a problem or task, it enhances our ability to process and analyze information. Attention helps us encode relevant details into memory, making connections between uh, different pieces of information and identify patterns or relationships. This deeper level of processing enables us to gain a better understanding of the problem and generates more accurate and insightful solutions. A third point is cognitive control. Attention plays a crucial role in cognitive uh, control processes, such as inhibiting irrelevant information and maintaining task relevant information in working memory. These control processes are essential for reasoning and problem solving as they allow us to stay focused on the task at hand and resist distractions and uh, switch between distractions um, and switch between different cognitive strategies as needed. So that's another important point. And then attention helps creative thinking. It is also important for creative thinking and generating innovative solutions by consciously directing our attention to different problem aspects of a problem. We can explore alternative perspectives, consider different possibilities and think so-called outside the box. Attention helps us notice subtle details making connections between seemingly unrelated concepts and generate novel ideas. Now, here's something that is very important. Attention also, with intention, helps us retrieve memories. So you probably had the experience, you know, when uh, we are sometimes, uh, um, when we're sometimes trying to remember um, a name and we're thinking about it and uh, it keeps uh, 
it keeps kind of, it's on the tip of our tongue, but we can never, um, we struggle to retrieve it. And then we give up after a while. And then uh, sometime later, we're doing something. Um, and suddenly it shows up in our consciousness. So what is this mechanism? Okay, what is this mechanism that, um, that involves memory, but um, also this phenomenon that is called the tip of the tongue phenomenon? It occurs when we experience the feeling of knowing a particular piece of information, such as a person's name. But we struggle to retrieve the memory, as I said. Then suddenly, when we stop actively searching for it, the information spontaneously comes. So, you know, there are many kind of neurological theories, but I think there's a bigger secret here, which comes from yogic traditions. And this says that uh, memory uh, is retrieved through attention and intention, but the memory storage and retrieval in Eastern wisdom traditions, particularly there's a concept called store consciousness. And that store consciousness is not in the brain. So in yogic traditions, it is believed that memories are not exclusively stored within the brain, but rather in a broader field of consciousness. And according to this view, the brain serves as an interface or tool. The brain serves as an interface or tool for us to access and retrieve stored memories in consciousness. It acts as a template or receiver of consciousness, enabling the translation of non-physical information into our conscious awareness. The idea of store consciousness suggests that memories and experiences are not confined to individual brains, but are interconnected and part of a larger consciousness or universal mind. This collective consciousness is considered to be the source of all knowledge and wisdom, and individual minds tap into it to access information. In this perspective, the brain acts as a filter or a channel through which the universal consciousness expresses itself. It receives and processes information from this broader field, allowing us to perceive, remember, and make sense of our experiences. The brain's neural networks and processes provide the framework for organizing and interpreting this information, shaping our individual perceptions and memories. So this understanding of memory storage and retrieval goes beyond the scientific, current scientific understanding of memory, which primarily focuses on the physical processes occurring in the brain. Eastern wisdom traditions offer a broader metaphysical perspective that considers consciousness as an integral part of memory formation and retrieval. While this perspective may not align with mainstream scientific theories, it highlights the rich diversity of philosophical and spiritual perspectives on memory and consciousness. It encourages us to explore different ways of understanding the complex nature of human memory and the relationship between mind, brain, and consciousness. So where does all this lead us? This leads us into just one, one conclusion, attention which includes intention. We always attend to something with an att intention. Attention and intention are the keys to manifesting any experience, including our understanding of the brain, including our understanding of the mind, including our understanding of the body, and including our understanding of the universe. Because all these processes are a, a unified uh, process in non-local consciousness which curves back within itself and creates again and again. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Prakritim Swamvashtabhai Vishra Jami Puna Puna Curving back within myself, I create again and again. So what is being created? 
what is being created is manifest experience. And that manifest experience is the combination of memory, imagination, past experiences, or if you want to just use one word for it, karma. Karma is recycling and evolving as the experience of mind, body, brain, and universe by just curving back within itself. This is the basis of reincarnation. This is the basis of, uh, of manifestation. And this is also the basis of retrieving memory. One of the things I do is when I am, um, say, placing an object someplace, let's say I take this object and I want to place it in a drawer over there. And so as I'm doing it, I observe myself putting the object in there. I see the image and then that's stored forever. You'll never forget that. You'll always be able to retrieve a memory if you consciously, through attention and intention, stored it, consciously stored it. Otherwise, it's there, but it's kind of vague and it's not clear. And that's, uh, in fact, uh, what we call a poor memory. The more focused you are in anything mindfully, you will access memory. You will access your most, uh, uh, most um, uh, important desires. You will access the secret to manifestation. And when you combine that attention, intention, focused awareness with the meditative state, and then you let go and return to fundamental awareness, that is called sanyama, sanyama in Sanskrit, where seer, scenery, and seeing reside, where knower, knowing, and known reside as pure knowing, the in infinite potential to know and manifest anything. This is advanced yoga, and I'll be teaching it in the course, and I hope you will enjoy it because Pure knowing is the potential for all knowing. And attention is the key. I hope this helps somewhat. And I'm really looking forward to the course. I have just two more days of recording and then a little bit of editing and then um, we'll put the course online. Thank you so much.